We're live. Oh! One second. Alexa, stop. Happy Sunday, everybody. Lamb tagine. Moroccan lamb tagine we're making today. As always, we didn't do it last week, Mrs. Spielberg, but we're going to do it this week. We're going to start our Sunday off with a glass of bubbles. I love when you board a crystal cruise. If you've never sailed with us, the first thing you're given is a glass of champagne. And one of the team's members says, welcome home. We are home, but welcome home. <laughs> mm. Delicious. Jacquard, it's our last bowl, Mr. Spielberg. Uh-oh, you better call uh, the liquor store. We've, um, we've gone through this over the last several weeks. <laughs> What a joy it's been going for it. Um, hello, how are you? How's everybody feeling? What's everyone been cooking this week? Has anybody ever made a lamb tagine before? That's my question to you. And then Mrs. Spielberg, I can see your piece of papers over here. If you would for us, Mrs. Spielberg. Oh, you write them down? I never get to see these. Mrs. Spielberg, we have some culinary heroes, some crystal culinary heroes. Would you share them? Sure. Um, let's see. Sally Hill made the crepe Suzette and oh. loved the recipe. She served it with some ice cream. Spot on. Uh, made for a great dessert. So thank you very much, Sally. I'm Sylvia really Beller um, was the highlight. This is her highlight of the week. She oh. loves the recipes and great tips, but most importantly, the virtual camaraderie and humor. Okay. Uh, Patricia Gleason Morris can't hardly wait until Sunday to see your presentation. And Cynthia Hyde, she also loves the vi virtual camaraderie. She loves Chef John, Mrs. Spielberg, the recipes. She's made the butternut squash panini last, panini last night, which was superb, mm -hmm. and made the Portuguese chicken and potato salad. Wonderful. Um, so that was great. And let's see, Deborah Casper, can't wait to try these recipes. Love the Facebook Live segments, John and Mrs. Spielberg. Thanks, Mom. Just knew I had to have this at Judy Mosk. And this with the picture of the cookbook. With oh, the nice. Garden. And you had uh, the seahorses uh, on, 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 um, on your shirt and the beautiful trees. And well yeah, that was really pretty. Garden. Gorgeous photo. Um, and then Doug Rutkowski, Chef John, I have a clay. Tajine, how would it be cooked in that? I'm sure you'll get to that yeah. during the segment. And then Elizabeth King, she said that the crab cake has been a consistent winner. So Yay. thank you guys. So just to, uh, this is your first time um, tuning in. Uh, we also do put it on YouTube as well next week, uh, in the week, I believe. Um, there's lots of recipes. We've been making recipes since March. And we try and we test all the recipes out beforehand. When you watch the videos, I try to show you where you can go wrong or where a variable heat may change it, etc. Oh, the champagne by Drew. Count that, ladies. You say that, talk a little louder. Louder? Absolutely, that's my favorite thing. They can hear me. Across 10 miles from Morocco, you have, um, what's the island there? Gibraltar. 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 You can hear me from Gibraltar. Hello! <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful passage from uh, Gibraltar to Morocco, 10 miles away. Um, we are going to be making the tagine this week, um, but what I want to show you is how and what to do. So a tagine, if you think about it, this is a tagine. This one is by the company Le Creuset. If you was to invest in one, I would say invest in one of these. However, I am going to say this, you don't need one. If you're a bit of a stickler and you want it for presentation, uh, I would say have it. There are a couple of different types. There's glazed. So if you can look at this, this part is actually glazed. So you can see. Then there's the terracotta. What I like about this one, it's got a cast iron bottom so you can heat it up. If you've been to Morocco, whether you've been to Fez, Casablanca, any of the places and purchased one, which most people do, it's almost like going to the Costa del Sol and buying a, a donkey with a straw hat, you just seem to purchase them. 
Soak, if it's terracotta, soak it in water. So Doug, if yours is terracotta, soak it in water for about uh, two or three hours beforehand. If it's semi-glazed, you can soak it in water with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And you're gonna wanna use a diffuser. So between the heat and the flame or the electric, a diffuser. You can look online what a diffuser is because otherwise you may be uh, subject to hairline cracks. No matter even if you're using a diffuser with a tagine pot, always bring the heat up gently and never put the lights of the clay in cold water or a pipe and not from the fridge into a hot oven. That will cause hairline cracks in there. So, when I tested a tagine, the reason why we like tagines is the steam comes up and it hits the top and it's designed for it to come back down and keep it from juicy. Uh, a tip, if you have got a tagine, put an ice cube on the top and what that ice cube does, when, when, the, when the water comes up, it actually helps it drop down. So a little bit of cold water or ice cube. So this is going to be cool, but you don't really need it. When we look at a Dutch oven and we look at a tagine, we're looking for evaporation of water. So a Dutch oven, you're going to lose about 9 to 14 percent water but we're going to stop some of that by using a piece of foil the taste will be no different whatsoever absolutely no difference I guarantee so it's up to you whether this is worth real estate in your home if you've got a big kitchen and you can put this in a cupboard then I'd say happy days if you are going to use it if you was to ask me would I purchase one I would say no I would use a Dutch oven because it's too much real estate in the studio. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. I just have to get on my little uh, culinary soapbox for a moment. Um, you know, I think sometimes when you see uh, a lot of ingredients, people get scared, but please don't worry about it. It's just an extra couple of things. And the reason why I put things in is because they do belong in there. Let's get the couscous started because I know a lot of people struggle with couscous. So I want to quickly show you how to make a couscous at home. So I've got the pan on. Uh, I'm going to put this I'm going to turn off the air because everyone's saying that there's residual sound. Is it the air? Is that better now? Is that better, guys? Hopefully. Hopefully that's better. We've got the air on. Do you remember that one show we did and we were sweating? Well, it might be repeated. <laughs> <laughs> we did one show before the air was working and I couldn't even move. Okay, I've got the pan on, medium high, some butter. I'm adding some butter to the pan, and this butter, as always, we use unsalted butter, and the reason why we use unsalted butter is because different manufacturers have different amounts of salt in them, so in order to get consistency, we add the salt ourselves. So couscous, if you think about it, it's semolina, and it's very fine, you see how fine it is? And they actually say, before there was ever pasta, this was actually the inspiration for pasta with the semolina. Um, I know a lot of people say the Chinese inspired pasta, but I actually believe that it first came from the semolina. Okay, so what we're going to do is the butter's in there, Mrs. Spielberg. I'm gonna add some minced garlic. Please don't use the stuff from a jar. The stuff from a jar is drastic. It's uh, absolutely just just not my cup of tea. I'm trying to be positive, you know. Now I can smell the garlic already. Can you smell yeah, that? Yeah, it smells delicious. And then I'm gonna add the couscous. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna coat all the grains. From... Could you use quinoa? Uh, feel free to use quinoa. You could use some barley as well. If you like barley, feel free to use barley in there. So what we're doing is gonna coat these grains, Mr. Spielberg. We're just coating them nicely um, with the grains. And the butter's in there, and the butter gives it a nice nutty taste. And you see the way we're coating them? And that butter is gonna help these become individual grains. And it's almost like when we make a pilaf of rice or risotto, we want to coat the actual couscous, and this helps it separate. Now, always remember with couscous, when it comes to liquid, we're always going the same amount. So if it's one cup of couscous, one cup of chicken stock. If you're looking to have couscous with fish, maybe you wanna use some orange juice, something like citrus or orange juice and lemon, a combination to bring the flavor out. We know it's got no flavor, so we're gonna add some pepper to here, because pepper's always good, and then just a small amount of salt, tiny small amount of salt. And then we've got the stock as well. So what we're gonna do is bring this stock up to a boil. 
on our wonderful stove. And you can see, can you see the way that's coated nicely, Mr. Spielberg? Yes. Fantastic. So now we've got the couscous cooking. It doesn't look like it's hot no more, but believe me it is. So I'm gonna grab the lid. So what I want to do is, you know you've got your stock is coming up now. You can see the steam's coming off the stock. I'm gonna add the stock to the pan. You're gonna hear a sizzle now, okay? okay. So there's the stock going in. We're gonna give this a quick stir, right? Yep. And then what we do now is pop the lid on, leave the lid on, turn that off. So I'm gonna put that onto zero. We're gonna take that and put it on the countertop over here. Am I coming back? You can stay there for a second. That's so right. That's, yeah, I'm just gonna put this pan on for us. Okay. Um, so that basically, Mr. Spielberg, this one over here, sorry, sorry, Mr. Spielberg, it's me. Come on over here. Um, leave this on for seven minutes. Alexa, set a timer for seven minutes. Leave it on for seven minutes. Seven minutes, starting now. Oh, she's loud today, isn't she, by Jove? Um, so, probably, probably you're saying, I wish you was as loud as Alexa, John. <laughs> um, yellow onions. You don't have chalk so loudly now. When, 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 when you think about onions, you want to use yellow onions. There's all a variety of onions, but your common yellow onion, which is called your Spanish onion, that's going to be the ones what we use for cooking. We're using saffron, so some folks have never used saffron before. So, go on. Was the broth hot? When the you broth was hot, yeah. So the broth we had, we, remember we had the broth in the pan heating up. So that was nice and hot. Okay. So let's think about it. Saffron. Saffron is from the crocus, plant, uh, the crocus plant. You get three pieces. So if you take a look here, you'll get three of the stigmas play a plant. That's the female of the actual flower the female stigma. And if you think about it, it's very expensive, but you want to buy good quality. Iranian or um, Afghanistan's got some beautiful, I think, fabulous um, saffron as well. Um, and you, if you look at it, it's going to take 170,000 plants to make one pound of actual saffron. So let's take a look. We've taken the saffron and we've let this come in the water and bloom. And you can see these nice, you see, can you see them? They're nice and long. And when you look for saffron, make sure they're all red. There's a lot of places where you'll see them and they're actually yellow and red. And that's usually not a good sign. When you're looking for them, you want them mostly red. So What's the shelf them. life on them? Um, I usually put these, these will last quite a, quite a while, as long as it's not with all spices, never have them over the stove and over the heat. Always keep them away. I, I have a spice drawer when I keep them. Um, and saffron's wonderful in tea, saffron's wonderful in sauces, which we'll talk about a bit later on. We've got some um, marinara sauce, which you wouldn't usually use in, in Moroccan cooking, you usually use tomatoes. Some olives is going to cook, that's going to be some saltiness. And then for the fruits, we've got some uh, golden raisins, some apricots, and some prunes. And please don't be put off. You know, the English back, if you look at the history of British food, we used to cook with a lot of fruits, and then we just stopped. And then the carrots, we've cut into large pieces. They're big pieces because they're going to be cooking for an hour and a half to two hours. So we don't want them to go to mush. Some cilantro, and then we're going to take some lemon zest. And as always, we use a peeler for lemon zest. This is the easiest way to get it off, about four pieces. In, over in Morocco, they use a lot of preserved lemon, um, but I didn't want to go that far for us. I wanted something that was going to be close, but I didn't want you having to make a preserved lemon, which is going to take about a, at least a month to make at home. Okay, so let's go over to the stove, Mrs. Spielberg. Anyone got any questions before we start? You could use pearl couscous, right? Pardon? You could use pearl couscous. Uh, pearl couscous is going to be a little bit bigger, yes, but that might take a little bit more stock if he was going to do that. I'd probably blanch the couscous, I would blanch it off, and then I would, uh, from the blanching, then I would do that. So, um, what we're going to do, Mrs. Spielberg, is I'm going to turn that on off, that's okay with you. Yep. Um, what we're going to do, I'm just going to step in here, is the meat, I've already started to brown the meat. I browned this off this morning, but I just want to show you. There are two ways to brown meat. There's in the pan, which is the traditional way. 
the traditional way of doing it. Bring it, you salt your meat a couple of hours before, then dry it. You want to dry it because otherwise you end up not browning it and it ends up steaming in the pan. So always make sure just before actually going, and this is with fish, any protein, make sure it's dry beforehand, okay? And this has come up to room temperature. And we have a show, this is actually from a leg of lamb. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of oil. And I think we say a couple of tablespoons. It could be take two to three tablespoons. And I'm using a Dutch oven. Remember, this Dutch oven's got a heavy lid, so not that much steam is going to actually come out of this. Now we can see the pan. I'm going to get it a little bit nice and hot. I've pre-warmed the pan, and I know it's dry. So you can hear it. Can you hear that? It's a nice sizzle. See. It's a good sizzle. And a lot of the times, Mrs. Spielberg, People have a tendency to overcrowd a pan. Remember, the more meat you put in, the cooler the pan is going to get. Some, some of our viewers actually have preserved lemon, so how would they utilize it? Just, um, I would use uh, one half a preserved lemon. Now look, this makes a messy countertop. Take your colander and turn it upside down. So what happens is when you put meat, it's always going to make a mess of the countertop by taking the colander turning it upside down, it catches all of those things. So you see they can't get out now at the moment, you see that? Yep. So some people have a splat screen, but this works the same way if you don't have one. I'm gonna have to put the fan on a little bit because otherwise we'll be, uh, it will look like a, one of those 1980s MTV uh, songs, you know, I'll be like that. Take on me. How long do Meyer lemons, um, can they be stored in the fridge? Um, my lemons could be, they'll, they'll go in the fridge for, are they in preserved or just lemons preserved. in general? Uh, put it in your drawer, they should last, they should last at least three weeks. If it's a my lemon, just a my lemon in general, but it's not preserved. But, you know, you can take, I'm brown, you can see it's got a nice little bit of color on there. So, if you're scared of browning, one of the things you can do, dry your meat on an oven tray, put your oven up to 425, then put, it, put your uh, shell close to the broiler, coat your meat with oil under the broiler for about 8 to 10 minutes. That's going to give it a nice brown. So that's another way to brown your meat instead of browning it on the countertop. So there's always a couple of ways to do things. You don't get the bond on the bottom of the pan, what we look for when we're cooking is to get that nice bond on the bottom of the pan. So you can see I'm covering this. Now these pieces of meat are just I'm just going to place them over here. We've got some colour on them. It's smelling great. Already I can smell the lamb. This same recipe can be done with beef. So that was the question that just came up. Yeah. So the same recipe. If you don't like lamb, feel free to do it with beef. The same recipe, all, by the way, as well, could be done with some chicken thighs. Chicken thighs would only take about uh, probably an hour to cook uh, in, in, the, in the actual liquid. So the pan's nice and hot. We're browning. Alexa, stop. Stop. The meat's browning. The meat's got a nice, got a nice color on the, on the meat now, Mr. Spielberg. We've got some chicken stock which we've warmed up. So the chicken stock's hot. We can see that, you know, everything's all coming together nicely as you see this. I've got everything I need to cook right in front of me. I feel confident. I feel good. The only thing I haven't got is some champagne. <laughs> um, did anybody see Friday night show at the Galaxy? If you just tune in into this show on a Friday night, we have uh, the Galaxy Live, and it was brilliant. I want to say cheers to Keith and Scott for such a wonderful show. I loved it when the girls sang Jolene. Brilliant, what a wonderful show. If you have a chance after this show, go along and watch it. Brilliant show. I love sitting in the palm court here. Yeah. And you can just get to have a nice cocktail before dinner and listen to the duo playing. Oh, God. Okay, so why are we browning? Browning is called a Maillard reaction. Go on, Mr. Spielberg. Would you use beef stock if you're going to make it with beef instead uh, of lamb? You could, feel free to use beef stock, yes. Um, I'm not going to use lamb stock. Um, I took the bone out and I didn't use lamb stock because it would be a little bit gamey for my American audience. If I was over in Britain or I was uh, in Morocco, I would use lamb stock. What cuts of beef would work best for it? Uh, I would use some chuck, some pieces okay. of 
Chuck for this one. Uh, Chuck would work perfect for it. And um, Mary and Heath think that the colander hit, uh, is a great hit. It's like a great tip. To... Oh, thanks, yeah. You know, I just want to say thanks so much to everybody for all the kind words. You take time and you, you post such beautiful, um, kind words. And, you know, it's really touching and it's... Okay. It's been a challenging time for everybody because we're not on the ocean together and that's just sad, you know, because if you've never sailed with Crystal Club before, and I'm not just saying this, I w I'm not like that, you actually, it's a family, you know, when you go on board you get to know the guests and you care about them. And Keith, for instance, he's an amazing soul and I can't wait to meet Doug and have a shot with him. You know, I'll say, can I have two sausages at the bar? He and Gary were waiting for you to say sausages. Gary. Uh, okay, this is the other guy. Yeah. So if I meant Gary. Hunter. Oh, Gary. Okay, so what we're going to do is have the onions. The onions are going to come in there. Now, with your onions, I had these pre-sliced. So they were ready. You could slice them half an hour before. So we're just adding the onions to the pan. Normally what we do, Mrs. Spielberg, we give them, get, let them cook a little bit longer and get a little bit of colour. Obviously for the show, you know, it's always the hardest thing on time, you know, with it. But I do want to get this on the go for us. So we've got the carrots, and the, sorry, we've got the saffron. See that beautiful saffron? I want you to see that. And, you know, over in um, Afghanistan, and, and when, the, when the Iranians cook it, they actually soak it the night before. Uh, or some of them will actually grind it in a mortar and pestle. Oh, it's the spices, Mrs. Spielberg, I forgot. Oh, Come sausages. Come on over here. The spices, I forgot. Okay, a lot of this... Um, We've got some cumin and we've got some uh, coriander seed. A mortar and pestle, don't, you don't need to buy a spice grinder. Just use your mortar and pestle and your mortar and pestle will actually give you better flavor. The oils come out better in a mortar and pestle than what they actually do in a spice grinder. I have a spice grinder, believe me. I've oh, we have one. Yeah, but I don't use it. I always use this. If you're in a restaurant, then a spice grinder is the way to go. But at home, I just freshly grind your spices. Okay, so now we've got those ground. That's perfect. They'll just dissolve into it. And we're using turmeric. Um, turmeric, just be careful in your food processor with turmeric. I think next week we're using turmeric. Um, but just be careful, depending on your uh, food processor, because it can stain, depending on the brands. Okay, at this stage, spices go in, turmeric, the cumin, which is the most popular spice in Moroccan cooking, cinnamon stick, a quill of cinnamon, garlic. I love the word quill. I love the word quill. I used to write one with one. Okay, so now we've got all the, everything's coming into the pot. The marinara sauce is going to go in there, or you could use some... Hey, I do want to say, you don't have to make marinara sauce. I really love that Rayo's. That Rayo's is spot on, and I don't work for them, but I want to say it's just a Rayo's marinara sauce. It's actually just the same price as what it costs you to make it. I've done the pricing. Some olives, which is going to add saltiness and brineness. The saffron is going to go in there. Just going to pour a little bit of that stock in the glass to make sure we've got it all out. What's a good substitute for um, coriander or it, cilantro it, if people have that soap yeah, thing? Yes, Annie, just don't put it in. You don't need it, okay? The sweetness. At this point now, what we would normally do, I actually tell you to soak off. So we pour the stock and we soak them off for 15 minutes and this helps them melt in there. If you like all of these fruits and vegetables, you could add them, take them out and add, uh, sorry, all these fruits, you could add them for the last half an hour, but I like them to melt into the tagine. It adds sweetness. So now we've got all of the stock in there. I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit more. Now we've got all of the stock, the carrots are coming in. So we're adding everything. Half of the cilantro is going to come in here, Mrs. Spielberg. Okay. And, and once if you don't you, like cilantro, don't use it. Don't use it. Just don't use it. You don't need to replace it. Sometimes you don't. It just adds a small, subtle nose. And the lamb that we browned, I remember I browned this off earlier on for you. And then what we're going to do is just roll it in there, the lamb. And then I've got about, I've got twice as much lamb as what the recipe calls. We, we're going to be having a soiree this afternoon. 
And remember that 75% of meat is going to be water, so that's going to steam. And then we're just going to add a little bit more stock. About that's more than enough because once the water starts to release from there, Mr. Spielberg, you'll see that that will cook down. At this stage now, we're going to place the lid on it. This is going to go into the oven. So we'll let that go into the oven. I'm just going to drag this out. Let me get this. So here we go. I'm going to go this way so you don't get to see me bending over. <laughs> be looking worse with that and I'm going to pop this in the oven now depending on the size of your lamb this is going to take oh, sausages this pan's bigger this is supposed to be a cooking show oh, oh we turn we turn the air conditioning off Mr. Spielberg we're hot it's really hot oh, we've sacrificed oh. sound for our Ooh. own well-being I'm wearing jeans Jimmy cricket Oh, gosh, I need so, more champagne. I don't know if I can bend down. <laughs> <laughs> the hot oven's coming on. Yeah, oh, you're definitely God. sweating. Oh, sausages, be careful bending down. <laughs> oh, put that in the oven. Oh, I need a slip. Oh, I, I, I need one too, except I'm trying to hold the camera. Mm. Oh, gosh, I feel good. <laughs> okay, at this stage now, we bring this out of the oven. We just bring this up to a little boil. Let's go and check Mrs. Spielberg on our um, on our couscous. Woo, woo. <laughs> okay, so the couscous came out. So take a look at the couscous. I'm gonna get a fork for you. So remember what we did with the couscous, and you can see it's nice and fluffy. Can you see that? It's perfectly cooked. Okay. Very fluffy. Very fluffy, and it's, it's wonderful. At this stage, we're gonna add. You don't have to. We're gonna add some craisins. Feel free if you wanted to at home, we're going to add some nuts. Feel free, for you at home, you can have as much fun as you want. You go where you want to go. And then what I find, just to take a little bit of that edge off the actual couscous, off, off the, uh, the dryness of it, a little bit of oil, and then a small amount of lemon, just to give it a citrus bump. Just a small amount, Mrs. Spielberg. All right. And give that a stir. I've got a few more craisins here. And that could be apricots, that could be raisins, that could be anything. Um, couscous the next day, when you sit it in the fridge, it always has a tendency to dry out. So if you've got any left, just make a little vinaigrette, a little bit of oil, a little bit of vinegar or lemon, and then some sliced cherry tomatoes would be wonderful in there. So there you have your couscous, and that's how easy it is. Just look at those grains as I show you. They've all got their own individual personality. Each one is a, an individual character. It's not sticky at all, and it looks fabulous. And it, it really is effortless to make once you know the process now. And you can, the world is your lobster. Lemon or lemon zest? Uh, lemon zest, or you, if you want to, you could add some lemon zest to it. I just added a little bit of lemon juice to it, just to give it a little bit to cut the fat of the lamb. Um, but for, are you drinking champagne? <laughs> I am. Okay, it's hot. just take a little peek for a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over the lamb and we'll take a little peek at what we've made today. Does that sound good? I'm going to come over here to you. So I hope, you know, as you watch the show today, you realise you don't need a tagine to make Moroccan food. If you've got one, happy days, feel free. It looks nice on the table and it's great, but you don't need it. We let that cook for two hours, and when it comes out, are you ready for this? What's the reveal? Ready? Yep. Uh, one. <laughs> ah, and there you have it. gorgeous. And that is um, that's how we can see this beautiful tagine. And let's take a look at the carrots, and let's take a look at some things in here. We can see that if we take one of the presentations, we'll often see Mr. Spielberg. I'm just going to a spice straw. Not the spice jar. <laughs> this is the spice jar. I just want to show you something. And one of the presentations you learn when you are into learn how to cook in, in Morocco. So one of the, the things they'll do is they'll take stuff a uh, uh, prune and they'll just dip it in some sesame seeds and they use it as part of a presentation. So as we look in here, so let's take a look at a carrot because I'm sure those carrots look really big to you. So you can see that the carrot's nice and tender. You know, the cinnamon stick, we no longer need this. 
but you can see as we look at the meat, just look how, just take a look how tender that meat is, Mrs. Spielberg. As and I what's put, on the prunes? What, just just sesame, seeds? sesame seeds. But I'm going to grab a piece. It's hot, but I'll do it for you. Just look how tender that lamb is. Can you see that? You are really suffering for it's your art, just, as Annabelle was saying. It's, it's, <laughs> it really is. I do have food for you. It's blissfully tender. It's unctuously delicious. Alexa, stop. And you can just see. And then feel free, we've got the old Alexa, stop. You can see that everything's cooked so nicely. There's some lemons on there. You don't need to put them in there, but everything's just so tender. Let me just show you one of those pieces of meat again. Just look how it's perfectly cooked and tender. Now remember, if your meat, uh, if you've got a, uh, a smaller cut of meat, be sure to check it. Just don't go on my time. Be Feel free to check it a few times. Do you stir it at all during the process? Uh, I do stir it a few times during the process. And did you sort of stage it like this so it looked pretty? I staged it to look pretty because that's what we do at Crystal Cruises. <laughs> we always make things look beautiful for our so guests. So nice. Um, we've got the couscous. We've got this. Tonight we're having some friends over. We have a, a bocce port here in uh, Martha's Vineyard. So some friends, our dear friends, are coming over. So we're going to be hosting, them. we're having a Moroccan meal tonight. Some almonds just before serving. Don't put them on too far ahead. Remember this can be made a couple of days ahead of time and just reheat it gently. Don't heat it up too fast. Um, so I'll tell you what we're having for our Moroccan feast tonight. Let me pull a couple of these off. We're having some Moroccan flatbreads, which is traditional. We're having some stuffed peppers. So we've taken some peppers and we've stuffed them with uh, classical, we've stuffed them with some um, raisins, onions, mushrooms and allspice we've used in there. I've made some quick pickles. So we took some, um, one, on one of the shows we'll show you how to pickle things. Uh, the saffron, we've made a saffron aioli. You can see that beautiful yellow colour. Mrs. Spielberg made a beautiful cardamom and apple cake. And then we've got a yogurt and saffron sauce. And then we've got some potatoes that were braised in turmeric with a roasted tomato spiced sauce. So this makes for an absolutely delicious Moroccan themed dinner. Hopefully, fingers crossed, me and Mrs. Spielberg will <laughs> win a batchy. We built a batchy court, we've had lots of people over here and we've only ever won one game. So I'm hoping tonight we can do that. Does anyone have any questions before we leave? I know that everyone was wondering what we're making next week. Next week is exciting. Next week we're going to go, if you've ever sailed on a crystal cruise to Malaysia, Singapore or Indonesia, you may have had a rendang. So the cooking process next week we're going to be showing you, whereas we slowly cook the meat in the oven today, next week we're going on the countertop. So each week we try to do a different cooking process to teach you, as you, if you went to culinary school you would get a different process. So we're going to actually teach you to slowly cook. Um, I would say a rendang is in one of my top five dishes I've ever had in my life. We're, I was blessed to go to a cooking school in Indonesia and in Malaysia and I learned how to make rendang and it really, really is absolutely fantastic. It fills your house with this beautiful uh, fragrance. Um, thank you everybody for all your suggestions. Um, we do have some of your suggestions coming in the month of October. I don't know what I don't know what to say what they are, but we have got some good ones, including maybe one of mine. Oh gosh, <laughs> stop it! I've been I've got already gotten some requests for my apple cake. For your apple, oh. Let's gosh, get closer. Jimmy. Let's just go in one oh, more my time. Oh gosh, Jimmy, cricket. That's gonna be good with some dulce de leche on top. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Hey, I hope this week that the CDC says that um, cruise lines can go back onto the ocean, so I'm really excited. I miss seeing all my team members, I miss all my culinary team, and I miss our entertainment departments, just seeing everybody. And most of all, I miss you. I miss you, the guests. I miss going out to shore with you, going around, uh, talking about food, having meals together, making memories and laughing, but it won't be long before we will be back together. For now, you know, we get to spend time every Sunday with you. Thank you for tuning in. Have a lovely week. Always remember, it feels better to be positive than negative. I look forward to see what you're laughing at. Because Wendy said, yay, eggplant parm. I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> All right, have a lovely week.
week, everybody. Bless you, and I'll see you next week. Cheerio. See you next week, everybody. Bye. Mm.